The launch of a new Hilux is far more important than the launch of a new Commodore or Falcon these days, and this one's particularly important because it's the first all new model in a decade. During this decade, all the big brands have had a fair crack at toppling the light commercial Ute King, and the likes of the Ranger and BT-50, along with the Amarok, the new Navara and Triton, have all left the Hilux feeling a bit old. Toyota has spent the best part of these 10 years developing the new 8th generation Hilux from the ground up. So while it may look a bit like the old one, the chassis, body, diesel engines and transmissions are all new. The stronger frame is made of thicker steel, with redesigned double wishbone suspension up front and longer and wider leaf springs in the back to improve everything from load carrying to stability, ride quality and off-road articulation. The wheelbase is the same, but the body is longer, wider and lower with more clearance for off-roading. Toyota's Australian engineers had a bigger hand than ever in its development too, spending six years toughening up the suspension, tyres, undercarriage and electricals for us and the toughest environments in the world. It may be tougher, but the interior is more car-like than ever, with a standard touchscreen and reach adjustment for the steering for the first time. The materials are still tough though, so it hasn't gone soft. In the dual cabs, the back seat doesn't feel any roomier, but the cushions are more comfortable and the folding base is now split 60-40. There's 31 different variants to choose from, 12 of which are two-wheel drive, 19 of which are four-wheel drive, and you can choose between single or extra cab, or the popular dual cab, and each is available with either cab chassis or pickup tray. The Hilux is the first in its segment to get a standard reversing camera across all pickup models, and it's optional on the cab chassis. However, you can't get the forward collision alert or adaptive cruise control that's now available on the Ranger. The petrol 2.7 litre and V6 drivetrains have been revised to improve efficiency, but the new 2.4 and 2.8 litre diesels are the ones that we've really been hanging out for. The 2.4 makes similar figures to the old 3 litre, and the 2.8 litre brings the Hilux in line with its closest rivals. Both new transmissions are 6-speed units on the 4-wheel drives, and fuel efficiency has improved across the board. We've only driven the 4-wheel drive dual cab for now, and comfort, handling and performance have all improved but we only drove it with a 200 kilo load in the tray, so can't judge its unladen ride just yet. Even with the load on board, the top spec SR5 isn't quite as compliant as the Ranger Wild Track, so it's not quite a new segment benchmark. The new diesels are much smoother and more quiet than before, and the smaller turbo helps them to be more responsive. The steering is still hydraulic, but it's more direct and requires less effort than before and feels more like a car to steer than a truck. The max tow rating finally matches the 3.5 tonne segment benchmark for four-wheel drive manuals with the big diesel and it easily managed highway speeds with a 2.7 tonne van during our test. Four-wheel drive and low-range selection is now by a dash knob instead of a stick. SR5s get hill descent control for the first time and SR and SR5s come with a rear diff lock. Overall, the new Hilux has fixed all our big criticisms of the old model. It doesn't really move the game forward aside from the standard reversing camera on pickups, but it lives up to all our expectations in a modern light commercial ute. Toyota's ground up approach has made the new Hilux easily the best ever and the best suited to Australian conditions. Whether it's the best ute overall, we'll have to wait for a back to back comparo but you're not likely to be disappointed.